Hello everyone, this is Bentley from Kent, Washington, and today we're going to take a quick look at a brand new tank. Now granted, there's no fish in this tank yet. I've just put in the substrate and got some basic plants in there, just a real early start, because there's a lot of tissue culture starts here. So it's not going to look incredible right off the kick, but it'll let you see kind of how I put a tank together for a planted tank, and then once we're done looking at that, we'll talk about what's going in that tank. So let's quickly jump into a little short video I've made. And we'll see exactly the process and I'll tell you what's going on. So first off, we're going to start looking at just the substrate. Uh, this is really simple. This was before the last layer of substrate went in. So I went Echo Complete, one bag, Fluval Stratum, one bag, which one bag of Fluval Stratum is worth about two of Echo Complete. And then the top layer that came after this is another bag of Echo Complete. Now, at the very bottom of this, I've got some root tabs interspaced through this thing so that the plants have a good nutrient source as they kick in. A lot of these plants that I'm using are root feeders. So there's the base substrate level before water, before planting. Really simple, nothing fancy about this scape. Uh, scape is the wrong word, this planting. I'm, I'm definitely not scaping this tank. So here we are. Uh, this is just after planting and water. You'll notice some of the plants look a little, little ugly. Some look good. Almost all of this was from tissue culture. We'll go through the list. So up front, we have a bunch of Monte Carlo. Uh, behind that is some Lagonendra Meeboldi Green. And then behind that is Rotala Macrandra. Over here, you're going to see some dwarf hair grass. Uh, it looks a little ugly. Let me explain it in a second. And then over here, we've got Crypt Balance. And up front, there's another uh, super secret crypt. I'm not going to talk about it yet. But uh, it really struggled in tissue culture. So if you know your tissue culture crypts, you might know what that is. Uh, we'll see if I can get it to recover. It's It's been a pain. Up front here, we have some Crypt Lucens, and then behind that is some Sunset Hygro, so Hygrophila polysperma. Um, that's just there as a nitrate absorber. Eventually, it'll go away once this tank really settles in, and a different plant will replace it. Very simple, nothing too crazy in the tank. So now we'll, we'll kick over to a video the day later when the bubbles have cleared, and I've got a filter and the temporary light on here, and let me explain some things. Um, the water flow is going from left to right using an AquaClear 70. So instead of going front to back, I've got this kind of river system wise, and that's for the fish that are going in here. We'll talk about those in a second. Uh, two, I'm using certain plants that all, almost everything came from tissue culture except for the Sunset Hygro. Two of those tissue cultures uh, were a purposeful experiment. So the Rotella macrandra and the dwarf hairgrass I've grown in the past. Um, this is not a new plant to me. I'm very used to them. I decided because I got some for free from a friend in a tissue culture that I was going to conduct a little experiment. I left them in their tissue culture cups for, I think, about a month and a half, maybe even two months, just sitting in my grow room, warm, by a windowsill, getting some light. Not very much, but definitely not something I could grow in long term. The goal was to see how far I could push these plants, these very common plants, inside of a tissue culture. And then once I finally had pushed them really hard to where they look like they were about to die, can I now put them in a tank and recover them and bring them back to life? This is an experiment mostly so that I can give you guys some tips in the future. Because uh, some people really struggle with tissue culture or they'll see a tissue culture that might look like it's about to die and they'll be really scared about buying it. Or, or maybe they've got one and they didn't plant it right away and you know two or three days later, they maybe it doesn't get enough light or something and it looks really bad. And they're like, oh my gosh, I just wasted money. Not all the time. So this is something we'll talk about. Uh, finally, let's let's talk one thing about this tank. Um, the, the goal here is really to get a lot of more low-laying plants, nothing too tall. I mean, there'll be the, the crypt balance, they will eventually get tall. The stand plants will eventually get tall. But I want lots of front room, which means rainbow fish. Lots of room for them to swim. The Hygrophila polysperma is just here to help settle the tank in. I really just want that to sit there for a while, settle in, help with the, the process of fighting algae early on while the rest of the plants come to life. CO2 will get added to here, so will crush coral as a buffer inside the filter. Um, the, those are things to help deal with the, the entirety of the system. But the goal here, as, as we look at a bunch of plants going by, just because I shot very little video, because there's nothing too exciting with this tank yet. Um, the goal here is to get an idea of like what you can do with a tank by putting temporary plants in that are just there to do one purpose, not to be long term, but they're there to help settle the tank in and fight early algae and then get removed and replaced with something else once the rest of the plants have settled in and grown in. 
and they're now doing that work that you need that that very fast grower like rotalas um pocostamon octopus sunset hygro these are all great plants for doing that removing them later and then putting in a different slower growing or more uh, maybe even more fragile plant that might struggle early on unless the tank is really really set so let's go back to my face and we'll stop talking about this and we'll talk about the the finishing touches for this tank and how long it'll be until we see some fish Well, there you go, guys. There's a quick look inside the basic planting of this tank. It's nothing too special and it, nothing pretty yet. Um, I'm not, I'm not an aquascaper, and I'm not going for, um, you know, four hundred dollars worth of tissue culture plants like you might see from some of the the bigger aquascapers out there. We're going to the slow and steady mode. More of what you guys might do in your own tank, and I'll just kind of use this tank as a demonstration for not only my own purposes but everyone else. Uh, so a couple things we we'll talk about this. Number one, the fish. Um, those are still a secret because I want to I want to reveal them when they actually show up. But I'll give you a hint. Uh, if you've been watching Dan's Fish at all, which shout out to Dan's Fish. He's the guy who put together Get Gills. Really awesome guy. Our friendly fishmonger. Um, he actually is where I'm getting the fish from. These are a wild caught rainbow fish that hasn't really been super big in the hobby recently. Um, but very, very pretty fish. So that being said. Um, this is an opportunity to get something that's kind of faded away from the hobby and in common, I guess you'd say common, common care and, and, and breeding. But more importantly, these are wild caught specimens. So this is pretty sweet. Now that's your, that's your hint. If you watch Dan's fish, comment down below. If you think you know what fish this is, it is a rainbow fish. It is wild caught. And Dan has shown them in a video within the last, I think month, if I remember correctly, now that's not super helpful, but if you pay attention to a lot of Dan's stuff, you might know exactly what fish we're talking about because he hasn't brought in a lot of wild caught rainbows. Uh, two, the light on this tank has changed from what you've seen in the video. There's going to be a Fluval 3.0 on this tank. Um, that's It's actually on it now as I'm recording this, but not when I did the video. Part of what I'm going to do involving that 3.0 is that for all the 3.0s that I run in my house, I use almost universally the same settings. The 40 long will get slightly different settings. Um, I'm going to do a video on that light. And more importantly, why I want to do that is because I want to show you guys the settings that I use. So you can replicate on your own Fluval 3.0 the exact same settings that I use and get similar results and success, hopefully. Um, I love these lights. I think they're fantastic. That's it's not, not a sponsor, not paid for them. I've bought every single one of these at no discount whatsoever. They're expensive, but I feel they're absolutely worth it. I've gone through a lot of different lights and tested a lot from some very expensive ones to some very cheap ones. And I just think they're probably the best absolute bargain you can get. Finally, I want to give you one last little tip. One thing that I've done after talking with uh, several friends who've all seen and observed a similar behavior to me. I've used two tablespoons of marine salt in this tank as an early buffer. Now there's going to be some crushed coral going in here to give me some calcium and harden the water a little bit. I don't want it too soft. These are rainbow fish that are going in here, but I'm also putting CO2 in because I want these plants to do very, very well. We'll do low amounts of CO2. Very, very simple. Uh, the, the 40 longs are really weird tank. If you guys aren't familiar with the 40 long, basically what it is, is it's a shorter version of a 55 gallon. The length and depth, so front to back, are exactly the same as a 55. That's what makes this tank rare is that the 55 is super common. They don't often cut them down to that shorter height to make the 40 long. They're even harder to find than a 33 long, and you guys know how hard those tanks can be to find. So this is a kind of unique and weird tank. And one thing I will say is I don't want a lot of hardscape because rainbows, <laughs> rainbows for how beautiful they are, sometimes they're kind of dumb, and they'll run right into rocks and woods when they're trying to do uh, breeding displays or show off for the girls or doing their actual breeding. So I'm trying to limit the damage they'll do to themselves by removing that. But also, you guys know I'm not big on hardscape. I'm not a big aquascaper. I'm a plant person. More jungle tanks. You can even look at Tails' tank as he's basically taking a, a swimming nap up there in one of his favorite corners. Um, it's just plants. Just plants is kind of my thing. So uh, this, this tank, you'll get to watch it evolve. I'll discuss some of the things that give you guys all sorts of tips that will help you in a similar tank because I think that you can translate a lot of what I'm doing in this 40 long to a 55. So to get back on track, why did I use the salt? Uh, several people that I've talked to, including Master Breeder Dean, which 
You know, he's he's admitted he's not so great with plants, but we've all noticed something similar. When you use marine salt, because marine salt has lots of extra minerals and stuff in it than just your standard kind of aquarium salt. Um, if you use it in very low doses, like one per twenty one tablespoon per twenty gallons or maximum maybe ten, we've seen a sudden like spike of growth in our plants as that's hit the system. And we think part of that is because it's not so much salt that the plants start to struggle, but there's enough extra minerals in how soft our Seattle water is. There's a, a preface there if you're in really soft water that it helps those plants boost their growth because they've got all those extra minerals kind of naturally in the water. Um, so I'm testing that theory out with this tank because it's a brand new fresh tank. I'm buffering those two tablespoons in, so one per 20 gallons in this 40 long. Then we're gonna have a little crushed coral and a little CO2, but the CO2 in that and the crushed coral don't come until later. Um, I, it's a matter of I had to order a diffuser. I was out of diffusers around my house. I don't carry that many spare. <laughs> so um, that shows up uh, literally the day before this, this video releases. So all this information doesn't matter. The first week of this tank being around, it will have no CO2. So it doesn't get that benefit, but it does have the salt. So how quick will those tissue culture plants convert? And will that salt help? So this will be some information I'll give you guys. Uh, finally, make sure you comment down below. Let me know if you think you know what fish it is. Or maybe you just want to take a shot in the dark. It's a fish I don't currently own. I'm getting, I think it's 17 of them, 16 of them. Um, so there will be a lot, of, a lot of fish in this tank. Um, they're all kind of young. They're not very big yet. They will get big over time. They'll get probably about four and a half, five inches or so. And finally, um, we're going to breed these guys, definitely, because they're not something that's in the hobby. And Dan's already seen breeding behavior out of them. Another tip for you guys as to what fish it is. So if you haven't checked out Dan's fish, by all means, please do find out what fish it is. Comment down below. Um, and then, of course, pretty soon we'll go over uh, an awesome little video that I'm going to do just to give you guys exactly what I use on all of my fluval lights so that if you have a fluval light, you can replicate it. And I would hope get the exact same success I have. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.